Today, we'll have a thorough analysis on the market predictions, Nifty Index, and what lies ahead of us. Hello, everyone. This is Shilpa Raidas, and welcome to Midweek with India Charts. And we have the senior analyst, uh, Jay Vora, with us, uh, who's with India Charts and Stripe. Hello, and welcome, Jay. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very good. How are you? All good. Wonderful. So, Jay, we, we have seen a lot of volatility whenever we get data points from the U.S., and the question always boils down to how many rate cuts are we likely to see this year and how should we think about it? And also, please tell us what's the outlook uh, for the U.S. market, dollar index, gold and silver. Jay. Yeah. So I think, yeah, this is happening, uh, you know, quite often now uh, because, you know, mm -hmm. whenever we get the big data uh, that shows that, uh, that, you know, U.S. is not performing well, I mean, us uh, as a whole country is not doing that great i mean whenever we get such kind of data then dollar falls yield falls mm -hmm. in the anticipation that rate cut will happen but the next day i mean if we get a good data then again everything bounces mm -hmm. back i mean yield spikes up dollar spikes up so uh you know i mean that way we are seeing a lot of volatility and that's where i mean the pendulum keeps swinging whether there will be a rate cut soon mm -hmm. or uh or not I mean, that is where we are right now. But I think uh, when we look at the broader trajectory of the data also and uh, going by the commentary and what uh, the Fed is saying, you know, it looks very likely that rate cut is going to happen, of course, this year. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Fed so far is telling one, but I think there is a good chance that, you know, two rate cuts can happen uh, mm. by the year end. And uh, followed by that, there will be three or four rate cuts uh, next year. Mm -hmm. So what is happening is that market is, I mean, market is a discounting machine, right? So it will start discounting those scenarios. And and that is what seems to be happening. I mean, while we are seeing a lot of volatility due to data and all, mm -hmm. but uh, if you see S&P index, if you see NASDAQ, they are rising higher. So, uh, you know, many may argue that, uh, oh, the breadth in the U.S. index is not that great. Only five stocks are rising mm -hmm. higher and so on. Well, that might be true. But, you know, at this point of time, we also need to respect the screen. I mean, uh, see, uh, the reason why I'm telling you is because, uh, I mean, being in India, we see more, uh, you know, nifty index and uh, all the stocks more granularly, mm -hmm. right? But uh, yes. when we look at the index, I mean, it may feel like, oh, the index is doing very well. You know, sometimes we may argue that, oh, the stocks are doing bad, index yes. is doing good, and so on. But as of now, uh, the broader theme is that S&P 500, NASDAQ for that matter, you know, they are trading well above the trading averages, the key trading averages. Uh, and and more importantly, they recently broke out of the consolidation as well. Mm -hmm. So wait, uh, let me share my screen. So when we look at uh, S&P 500, for example, uh, I mean, if I do the daily chart, so, so, you know, we were seeing this consolidation over here. Okay. That eventually broke with a gap. And uh, once again, you know, S&P is rising higher. I mean, if you see NASDAQ and wait, let me also plot all the averages. So as you can see over here that it is trading above the key daily averages. Mm -hmm. On the weekly chart, it has not even broke. Uh, it has not even broken the twenty-week average. So it is basically continuing from there. If we see Nasdaq hundred, uh, I mean we have something very similar over here. There was a break of the twenty-week average, but it has again started to rise higher. And when we look at the daily chart, it would be trading above all the key daily averages as well. And in fact, it is looking much more stronger than S and P index. So I think, uh, you know, as long as we are not trading below the averages, I mean, there is no sign of, uh, you know, threat as of now. Uh, what, uh, what we can also look at is that if we go by the S&P 500 as well, so, you know, uh, I mean, earlier there was this bearish argument that we could make that, uh, you know, as long as this rise is basically, mm. uh, you know, below 138.2%, then there is a case of a sharp decline. But with, uh, you know, S&P 500 breaking above the 138.2% decisively, and then, you know, even this week, it is gaining momentum. So I think now, 
you know the bearish cases out yeah. of the window so in that case uh, you know what is the wave count that we may end up doing so then you know we'll have to think of something like this that this is one two this is again one this is two this is wave three that is going on this is wave four and now wave five is unfolding which is again five of three so basically mm -hmm. this will again make it three then there will be four and then there will be five so that way, if we see, uh, maybe there is a long way ahead as of now. Uh, so as I mentioned, I think respecting the averages or I mean index risk, respecting the averages is still say, says that the indices are in a good uptrend. And as of now, maybe the ones which are actually lagging and which are not participating, they may end up participating. I mean, due to rotation uh, and so on. So that is how we are thinking about it. Uh, now, if we look at the dollar index, um, so yes, so dollar index, uh, you know, while we were speaking last week, it was somewhere around the 40 week average. And, you know, we are just waiting, waiting and waiting for it to break on the downside, but it has not broken. So over here, what we have is that momentum in sell mode. But as of now, we are not seeing the averages break on the weekly chart. When I drill down and I, when I see the daily chart, this move, the recent move that we see, uh, basically from this low, I mean, this looks like a three wave, uh, pullback or even if, you know, we consider, uh, mm -hmm. from this, low, then this <laughs> might end up being, you know, some kind of ABCD or something like that. And, and basically what what uh, what we are thinking is that pro possibly this is you know some kind of leading diagonal that has formed uh i mean the shape might not look that good uh but uh you know the broader point is that this was the decline now this is the pullback that we are seeing eventually i think we should see a decline uh unfolding and that should probably bring bring the dollar index down to 102 and 100 sort of levels in the days and the weeks to come. And I think, uh, you know, on the downside, the trigger will pick up once these averages are broken on the downside, because that's where even the bands will start expanding and, uh, you know, the dollar index may go down. Uh, so that is what our, uh, you know, anticipation is right now. Uh, also, I mean, this move has retraced, I think, slightly more than 61.8%. In fact, it might be... 78 points so over here you can see that during the day there was a spike but it closed around the 61.8 percent retracement and from there uh, it has cooled off for the last two days and even today it is down so i think uh, you know even in terms of rmi if you see there was this positive divergence which happened and uh you know with the, with this bounce the pullback cycle has also completed. So now I think once there is a sell crossover on DXY and the averages break on the downside, that's where hopefully we should start seeing the next leg of decline. Also, when we look at the dollar, uh, I mean, when we look at the gold and silver chart, that looks very interesting. The reason being that uh, silver is almost at its lower end of the channel. If we draw this channel, right? And also if we see the RMI, it is, uh, I mean, you know, it is plateauing and now it is on the verge of giving a bullish crossover. So I think once we get a bullish crossover here and we close above the 20 day average, that would be a very good indication that the correction has ended. And also mind you, I mean, uh, you know, in terms of wave count, this is one, two, this is one, and this is two. And, and this decline has nearly retraced 61.8% of its of this previous rise. So the setup is actually very good for it to pick up. I mean, so far it is not picking up and, uh, you know, it, it, it just seems to be consolidating over here a bit. When we look at gold, uh, so what had happened was that we saw a very sharp decline over here. And that was due to a news that, you know, Chinese central bank has stopped buying gold and we saw a sharp decline, but this triangular structure that we are seeing. I mean, this is actually a triangular structure on the hourly chart. So what typically happens is that if there is a very sharp selling pressure that we have seen like this, typically what happens is that we form some kind of base that base helps to absorb the selling pressure. And once the selling pressure is gone away with, uh, I think that's where we start 
seeing momentum on the upside. So as you can see, the daily RMI for the gold is already in bullish mode, right? Now, what we want is actually a close above the 20 day average. And once we do that, I mean, we should see a pickup in gold as well. So the 20 day average for the gold is at two, two, I mean, two, three, three, two. And right now it is almost trading at that level. So, you know, from here on, uh, closing would be, uh, extremely important. And once we get a close above the 20 day average, that's where, you know, the indication should be that it should pick up. So when I have to connect all the dots, I think, uh, you know, gold silver, which has an, I mean, negative correlation uh, with gold, which means that if gold, I mean, uh, negative correlation with dollar, which means that if dollar rises, they fall. Uh, I mean, gold, yeah. silver falls. And if the dollar, uh, I mean, falls, then these will rise. So I think mm -hmm. gold and silver are already giving us that indication that they are likely to pick up. Uh, and I think in the dollar index where we have this doubt, uh, whether we'll get a decline or no. So I think when we look at gold and silver, it is definitely looking like dollar should head its, uh, I mean, should start its next leg of decline. And also equities are doing very well. And that uh, itself is also suggesting that, you know, maybe liquidity is very good and, uh, you know, overall mood is very good. So I think that dollar index should eventually go down and we should see positive momentum in equity, gold, silvers and commodity as a basket. Okay, wonderful. So Jay, uh, the Nifty index is uh, slowly itching higher, but we are also seeing the momentum lacking on the upside. Is there anything we should be worried about? And also, what is the store? Uh, what is in store for the Indian indices, Jay? Please also tell us what uh, are the sentiment indicators on strike suggesting us right now? Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, this has been very, very narrow range for the Nifty index. I mean, given that we had seen such a sharp up move, I mean, post that it seems to be slowly inching higher, right? Um, and, and, you know, it was looking like uh, today would be the day where this range will break on the upside, but so far it has not happened. So uh, see the way we are looking at it is that on the hourly chart, uh, as you can see over here, as long as you see the Nifty index trading above the 40 hour average, you know, we are good in the short term. I mean, that, that is a very crude way of telling you that the trend is up in the near term. It is only if at all the 40 day breaks on the downside and the Nifty continues to sustain below that, that's where we will think that is there a case of a deeper correction or no. By deeper correction, we mean, uh, you know, where index goes and it tested its average. So, so that is the risk that may, uh, you know, pop up. If at all, we see the Nifty index closing below the 40 hour exponential average. But I think until that doesn't happen, we are good. And uh, I think eventually this consolidation that we are seeing, you know, that should end at some point and we should eventually see a pickup. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because if you see the bank Nifty index, you know, we saw something very similar, up move, consolidation, and we saw a big move today. So what is happening broadly is that there is a lot of sector rotation that we are seeing within the index. Like, you know, someday IT pops up, someday bank is uh, rising higher, someday pharma and defensives comes into play. So that way we are, we are seeing a lot of churn in the Nifty index. And that's why uh, what is happening is that, you know, Nifty index is just remaining sideways. And in fact, it is slightly inching higher. But on a sector level, you will see that there is either a consolidation or a correction that seems to be happening. Like even if you see IT, it had gone up and now it has literally turned sideways. Uh, if you see PSE, uh, I mean, that has been inching higher, uh, you know, after this sharp decline. If you see reality, you know, it was rising higher, but today it is down. So we are seeing a lot of uh, mixed uh, moves within the indices. So that's where, you know, eventually we'll have to go case by case, but, uh, you know, all said and done, as long as they are above the 20 day average, okay, they are good in the short term. So, you know, we might get some hiccups here and there, uh, because, you know, we have seen this runaway rally 
after after a sharp uh, decline that we saw on the election day so after that you know almost 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so almost 10 days of up move uh, in this actually reality we have one day of decline but if we see something like small caps mid caps so you know these have rallied hard in the last 10 10 odd days so uh, you know eventually what we may end up seeing is some cool off but that's about it. I, I don't think we should read too much into it at this point of time, at least as long as the averages don't break on the daily chart. So any, any pullback towards the averages will be actually seen as a healthy correction. And what we would then watch out for is whether the reversal is happening from those key levels or no. So now, you know, that uh, brings me to the point that how are the market uh, participants position, uh, you know, for the Indian indices. So uh, when I look at the sentiment indicator, it nowhere tells me that, you know, we are getting into that extremely overbought zone or overheated zone or so. And, and let me tell you why. So, uh, you know, if we see the FI positioning, uh, so, we, you know, we have been highlighting this earlier as well that whenever the FI positioning, you know, turns extremely short, that's where eventually a bigger bottom occurs, right? And on this election day, when we got uh, this decline, I mean, that's where th their short reached the maximum. And from there, we have seen a very good pullback in the Nifty index, and they have started to cut their position as well, okay? Now, typically you would see that FI is turned from one extreme to the other extreme, so the expectation would be now also that before we actually end up seeing some, you know, meaningful top like this or this, you know, over year, actually there was a sideways uh, sort of correction, but over year you saw price wise correction, right? So for that to happen, I mean, we must see FI's positioning reaching to the other extreme. That's where, you know, we can say that we are getting into that overheated zone or you would need client positioning to go back to the short position, uh, you know, which can be maybe 90,000 or more. At this point of time, what clients have done is that, you know, they bought the dip because at this dip, they were extremely long. And in this up move, they have started to book profits and they are getting out of the position. And now they are just 15,000 net long. Okay. When their short position reaches say 90,000 contract, and when FI's positioning reaches that, uh, you know, that overbought zone, that's where, you know, we need to be a little worried. But as of now, I don't see any concern. In fact, even if you see the breadth, uh, you know, we are nowhere near this overbought zone. I mean, in fact, uh, there has been some cooling off that we have seen in the past two days. And, and that sort of tells you that, uh, I mean, there is this healthy rotation that is going on. And some sectors are doing well, some sectors are not doing well. And that's why you're seeing a breath, uh, you know, weakening a bit. But typically, uh, you know, at extreme tops or so, I would expect that at least they would go and, and hit their overbought zone, okay, which they have not done yet. Even if you see the 40-day exponential average, you know, that is also inching higher. And, you know, there is still some room on the upside, which is left on the upside. Even if you see over here, I mean, when they make, I mean, when, when the reading hits the overbought zone, that is not the top. Eventually what happens is that the index rises higher and the breadth keeps weakening to a point where the overall market mood becomes weak. And that's where we end up seeing correction, right? Over here as well, uh, you know, around this area, that is where the maximum breadth peaked out. And after that, uh, you know, slowly in this ups and downs that we saw, uh, you know, that's where the bread started to weaken. So I would expect something very similar that they would hit this mark. Okay. And after that, the index will whipsaw a bit. And that's where the breath will cool off. It will show negative divergence and only then it will falter. And only then, you know, we may end up seeing some correction. So that would be the idea, uh, you know, with which we will work out for. And basically what we look out for. And that's where, you know, the FI positioning and all, they will reach their extremes and they will already, I mean, they are already going to, uh, I mean, they will be warning us that, you know, now the market internals are overheated. You need to be careful. 
in fact even when we look at the derivatives data right i mean this was also something that we had pointed out that uh, you know this was also indicating oversold zone and from here you can see that once the nifty started to pick up this ratio also started to rise higher which now sort of tells you that people are more comfortable shorting puts and that's why you're seeing this ratio rising higher so until this ratio doesn't go back to say 1.05 or so uh, i mean we are okay i mean there is no need to worry as such uh, so it is when this reaches to say 1.5 or so fi's positioning reaches extreme bread shows multiple negative divergence you know that will be the point to think whether are we making a medium term top or no but until then i think we are good to go i mean you know given that we have seen such a sharp rally there might be some you know 200 500 points sort of correction that we may get from time to time but i think that's about it uh, we should not be thinking much beyond that and apart from that if at all you know there is a deeper correction that sets in then all we have to watch out for is that are the daily averages breaking or no if they are not then this may look like a healthy correction only and we should be picking up eventually so that is how we are thinking about it and that is how we are uh, positioning ourselves uh, you know one thing which i again want to repeat is that whenever their positions have turned extreme i mean the fi's positions have turned extreme i mean this i have mentioned twice now in the midweek uh, you know what we have ended up seeing is that they going from one extreme to other extreme and in that period you know the up move has ended up being 18 19% or so i mean in this case it was somewhere around 18 19% in this up move it ended up being uh, you know if i have to take till this top it was actually 21% but if i take over till year also you know where the breadth started to weaken uh, I mean, over here also, it was 18%. Now, the same thing, if I have to take it from here, and, you know, this was something which I have been mentioning in a couple of uh, midweek now. If I have to do that, then, you know, it would come to almost around 25,800 or so. So, if you see that as a guideline, I mean, looking at the past, then, uh, you know, we should be seeing Nifty index inching higher towards that 25,000, 26,000 mark. And if we see from current level, that is still uh, some time away. And also not to forget that because a lot of sector rotation is happening, you know, you might get uh, opportunity in the indices from time to time. But uh, yes, I mean, I think even if we broadly look at the indices, I think Bank Nifty is the one which has underperformed a lot and which should pick up even IT index, which has gone up and now consolidating. So I think even over here, once this consolidation is done and we break above the previous high, we should see a good move uh, eventually unfolding in Nifty IT as well. So I think uh, maybe this are more conservative sectors. Uh, other than that, you know, we you have all this PSU, uh, metals and so on. I mean, which have been rallying uh, and, you know, seeing a good up move. So, uh, so as long as they are above their averages and when their lower time frame gives a buy signal, that can be a good indication also to get in. But I think broadly, if I have to look at the structure, uh, you know, bank nifty and IT, these two sectors mm -hmm. actually look pretty in interesting in the short to you know, say a little more positional kind of perspective. Okay, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much for the comprehensive analysis, Jay. That was very insightful. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, signed into Strike as yet, uh, please do sign in. I'm going to leave down a link below. You get a 70s free trial. So the link is going to be there in the description. And of course, I would like to remind you guys and inform you guys about the webinar we are holding this Friday that is on the 21st of June at 4 p.m. Okay, so uh, you guys must be knowing we had a webinar last Saturday on RRG, that is the relative rotational graph. And this webinar is a part two series of the webinar series we are holding on relative rotational graph. So basically, Julius DeCampner himself, again, is going to be the speaker of the webinar. Last webinar 
was a huge success and we had a very good response. It was very interactive. And I would leave a link down of this webinar as well on the description. It is going to be held live on the YouTube channel of Strike Platform. Please go into the link and get yourself notified, okay? So that you get a notification when the webinar starts. This webinar is going to be about RRG again. You are going to learn how to use RRG to analyze and compare the relative performance of various sectors, indices, and stocks within the Indian market, okay? We are going to be very specific this time. And it's also going to be a very broader picture. Uh, also, there'll be actionable insights on how to use RRG to optimize your portfolio allocation. And of course, there's going to be a question and answer session to get clarification of your questions. Uh, we are really looking forward to it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys there. And thank you so much, Jay, once again for the wonderful session. I'll see you next week. Yes? Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.